football room separated by several uh, walls of glass. <laughs> and he turns around and for a moment I see something I have never seen before. And I stopped everyone, rushed out, and I said, Henry, show me this again. I want to see this. And he said, oh, no, it's bad, and I didn't film it that well, and I was underwater. I didn't even know that he was a diver. And I said, I must have this footage, and I will do a science fiction film out of it, which ended up in a film I did. It's called The Wild Blue Yonder. And so I owe him uh, the hmm. backbone, the most wonderful footage for an entire film. And I met him years, years, years before because I listened to recordings of uh, um, ethnic music all over the world and mostly very old uh, recordings. For example, one in Madagascar recorded in 1931 is the end of Little Dieter Needs to Fly. Mm. And I, I see this, uh, um, uh, this series of recordings uh, and I thought, this is extraordinary, there must be some, someone very, very special behind it. And I kept asking around and somebody said to me, ah, uh, his name is Henry Kaiser, and I said, I must meet him. And I met him without any agenda, just to express to him how wonderful he had worked on this. And it turns out he's a musician himself, so we got to know each other. Mm. And of course, when, when we speak about the music in... Uh, uh, encounters at the end of the world, he uh, not only knew very, very quickly what sort of music should be recorded, he also listened to this Basso Profundo church choir and he kept feeding me with the most wonderful Russian Orthodox church music. Mm. He, he immediately grasped it, picked it up and sent me and kept feeding me. And I listened to it with uh, Joe Beanie, the editor, and I said, number six, that's the one that we need for the beginning. Hmm. And we did. Fantastic. So I, sometimes, sometimes I'm blessed that uh, men uh, who, with whom I do not normally have to deal uh, come like a gift uh, out of the sky and fall in my lap. And, and I, it's, it's like... like uh, golden coins raining on me. Mm. And by extension on us. Is, Verna, the, 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 the subjects, the people you speak with, um, uh, who speak to the camera and speak to you, um, they're so relaxed. And they're speaking with a, a candor that it's hard to imagine arriving in a moment like that <clears throat> without a camera. Mm -hmm. Rolling is. The, do you have a little trick you do? How do you get people to? Well, somehow I know the heart of men, and that's why I am a filmmaker. And there's a very f strange incident when I did uh, the Wild Blue Yonder. Mm -hmm. I not only did I um, use Henry Kaiser's Strange Planet uh, material, I also. Uh, found images, uh, material shot on 16 millimeter celluloid, which was done by astronauts back in 1989 mm. on one of the space shuttles of unspeakable beauty. Nobody so ever saw this footage, and I discovered it in an abandoned uh, NASA archive. And, and I wanted to meet the astronauts and film with them 16 years later. And I finally got them together and we met in Houston at the Johnson Space Center. And there were these five or six chairs for them, two, uh, two women and three men, five of them, and a chair for me. And I was introduced to them and I stood there and I didn't know what to say now. My heart somehow sank and I looked from face to face to face. And then I had some sort of a moment of, a glorious moment of intuition and I said, to them, I grew up as a boy, I grew up in Bavaria in the mountains and I was looking after cows and I'm, um, as a boy I learned how to milk cows. From that time on I can tell from a face who is able to milk a cow. And I said, <laughs> you sir, you can milk the cows. <laughs> ah, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and, 
he, he truly looked like a man, like a good farm boy who, who, who knew how to milk a cow. And, and, and I, I did the right thing. And from that moment, the ice was broken. After three sentences, the ice was broken, and, and we were in business. Or, or, for example, in Encounters at the End of the World, I spoke very briefly to this um, uh, man, uh, David Pacheco, Mm. Uh, the journeyman plumber. Yeah. And he was kind of reluctant to, to even listen to me, and he had to go back to work right away. I met him five minutes. And then instead of shaking his hand, I turned to the side and showed my elbow, and he turns around <laughs> and elbows me. And we were in business. <laughs> See? <laughs> or, for example, the, um, the man who uh, has studied these gigantic icebergs, an iceberg, he was on an iceberg that is larger uh, than the country that built the Titanic. Uh, larger than Northern Ireland, larger than Lebanon, the country of Lebanon. And I somehow, he caught my attention again in the, in the cafeteria. And I wanted to film with him, now he had to leave. And, and then I saw him again and I said, uh, can we do it now? And he said, no, no, no chance. In 35 minutes, my plane is leaving from mm -hmm. the ice runway. Mm -hmm. I had 35 minutes, so I said to him, uh, I, let's give it a try. Let's go wild, let's give it a try. So he sat down. I started to make an espresso for him. And we talked about Bavaria, and we talked about this and that. And I said to him, um, and then I had to silence the noisy Italian group that had just come back and drank Chianti and sang songs. It was just too loud for me as a sound man, mm -hmm. because I did sound. And then there was this uh, traffic of, of carts wheeled around outdoors, so I silenced the entire environment and left him alone for five minutes. So we had 12 minutes left. And I said to him, and, and, and I, I had the feeling he should be instructed in a, in a special way. And I said to him, I don't want to hear the scientist. We know roughly what you are doing. I want to hear the poet now. Mm. And he looked at me, and uh, then he nodded, and he said, he's uh, the real poet, how he speaks about it. Mm. So uh, yeah, sometimes it is, it is if, if I had rushed into doing an interview with him, it would have been insignificant, and I probably would have not used it mm -hmm. in the film. You, you, have to, you have to understand a situation, and you have to know the heart of men. If you don't, you are not a filmmaker. And you know, as a filmmaker, where the epicenter of all fear is. Mm. So if you don't, uh, don't make movies. <laughs> you recorded that you were the sound recordist on the film? Yes, sure. You, it you was took a that great team. responsibility? Two oh, I team. have done it before. I've done, cin uh, I've, uh, done cinematography in films and, and embarrassed as having myself too many times in credits. I asked some well-known cinematographers, can I borrow your name? So I put them <laughs> instead of me. So. But <laughs> uh, yes, I'm, I'm all right as a sound man, and I'm proud. But however, I have to say, the finest piece of sound was done by Douglas Quinn, a, a wonderful artist who uh, had also an artist and writer's grant, went down to Antarctica two or three years before me and recorded with un underwater microphones the strangest of all calls oh God, that of, scene of, is, of seals. And yeah, that listening yeah. scene is yeah. amazing. Of course, it was kind of staged because uh, uh, the scientists wouldn't listen like this with the ear on the ice. Actually, so the lady what? almost froze to, to, <laughs> really? to the ice. <laughs> <Yeah. stuck. laughs> and, and there's this one with his fuzzy white beard. And I, I, I gave him exactly the kind of position how he should look. So it's, it's, it's very precisely staged, but it's very moving, and it's just wonderful. It's, how, it's a how you great hear. scene. Yeah, and only because they are listening with this incredible intensity, we as an audience start to listen to it, and, and we listen to it in a way we have never listened to sound. Mm. So you stage the body language in a very yes. precise, 
beautiful. Yes. I mean, millimeter by millimeter, exactly and where the hands had to be, exactly how they would lean, how far he would come mm. down to the ice. So it's it's very very precisely staged. And 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 in terms of the framing of the shot, the composition, were you as precise yeah. yourself, or do you do you trust 